When you create a roof, you need to define the boundaries of the roof. The Roof by Footprint tool creates a roof using the building footprint to define its boundaries. The walls of this building extend above level 6. I'll create a flat roof at level 6 with a parapet around the building that extends above the roof. I'll open the level 6 floor plan view by double clicking on that view in the project browser. Then, on the architecture ribbon, in the build panel, expand the roof split button. Realize that there are several different tools for creating a roof, such as roof by extrusion and roof by face. I can also create a soffit, a fascia, or a gutter. The default method is roof by footprint. When I click that tool, objects in the drawing area become grayed out because Revit has entered into sketch mode. The options bar changes to show tools related to creating a roof, and the ribbon changes to the Modify Create Roof Footprint Contextual Ribbon. In the Draw panel, Boundary Line is selected because I'm about to define the boundary of the roof, and pick walls is selected so that I can simply select existing walls to define the roof boundary. Note that I could also use one of these other tools to sketch straight line segments, arcs, and so on. Since I want to create a flat roof, in the options bar, I'll clear Define Slope. If I wanted the roof to have an overhang, I could specify that distance. If I choose Extend to Wall Core, the roof will actually extend to the face of the core of the wall, rather than the finished face. I'll select that option. In the Properties palette, in the Type Selector, I can choose the type of roof. For now, I'll just leave it. Now that everything is set, I can simply move the cursor over an existing wall until the wall highlights, and then press Tab to highlight the entire chain of walls. Notice that all the walls highlight. Click to select all of the walls. Revit immediately shows the boundary sketch as a magenta line. This line should appear along the inside face of the walls. If it appears along the outside face, then find the flip arrow. You can select the flip arrow to change the position between the exterior and interior face of the wall. Once the sketch is located properly, click Finish Edit Mode. Revit displays a dialog. Since the roof overlaps the walls, Revit is asking if you want to cut the overlapping volume from the walls. I'll answer yes. In this model, since the roof extends to the core of the wall, Revit will remove any finished material, such as gypsum wallboard and furring material that intersects the roof. The roof is created and remains selected so that you can make additional changes if you wish. On the Quick Access Toolbar, click Default 3D View. In the View Control Bar, change to a shaded visual style so that it's easier to see the roof we just created and the parapet that extends around the roof. In the Project Browser, double-click Section 1 to open that view and then zoom in to where the roof meets the wall. Be aware that the detail level is currently set to medium. If the roof and wall had layers, you would see them in this view. Let's see what happens when we create a roof that has a slope and overhangs the walls. Select the roof and then press Delete or in the Modify panel of the ribbon, click Delete. I'll switch back to the Level 6 plan view. On the Architecture ribbon, click Roof by Footprint again. This time, in the Options bar, select Define Slope and specify an overhang of 2 feet, or 600 millimeters in the metric file. Do not select Extend to Core. I'll do the same thing I did before. Hover the cursor over a wall until you see a dashed line beyond the exterior face of the wall, indicating the overhang. Press Tab to select a chain of walls, and then click to select that entire chain of walls. Pay attention to the difference this time. 
the sketch is actually drawn outside the exterior face of the wall because we specified an overhang. Also, each line has a slope control symbol indicating that the roof will slope perpendicular to that edge. The slope control adjacent to the edge I clicked shows its slope. As you can see, it displays the rise over run as 9 inches and 12 inches. You can change each slope individually, but if the slope will be the same at each edge, it's much easier to change this in the properties palette. When I scroll down, I can see the slope parameter. I'll click in this field and change the value to 6 inches and 12 inches. In the default metric template, the slope is shown in decimal degrees. Change the value to a 45 degree slope. You can also specify the slope as a ratio. For example, you can type equals 1 for a 12 inch and 12 inch slope or equals 0 0.5 for a 6 inch and 12 inch slope. To complete the roof, click Finish Edit Mode. The roof looks a bit strange in this view, so I'll switch back to the default 3D view. Be aware that the parapet walls are extending through the roof because they extend past level 6. But we can quickly fix that by attaching the parapet walls to the roof. Move the cursor over one of the parapet walls until it highlights. Press Tab to select the chain of walls, and then click to select all of those walls. The ribbon changes to the Modify Walls Contextual Ribbon. In the Modify Wall panel, click Attach Top Base. Once I do, I can see in the status bar that Revit is prompting me to select the roofs, floors, ceilings, or parallel walls to which the selected walls should be attached. Click to select the roof. When you do, Revit immediately attaches the walls to the underside of the roof.